This is Craig Migliaccio from AC Service Tech, and today we're going over how to build these small teaching displays in order to teach your HVAC students in the classroom how many split electrical components work. And so here you have a louver motor, here you have a tube thermistor and a bead thermistor, and they're being compared for their electrical resistance. And then here you have an EEV and a pressure transducer. So I'm going to show you the function of these displays and how to build them. I have links to the parts list down in the description section below. And if you want to teach your students about mini splits and the refrigerant related practices, along with all of the electrical installation and troubleshooting, make sure to check out our inverter mini split operation and service procedures book, which is available over the website at acservicetech.com, over on Amazon, and also Google Play and Apple Books. The function of the first display is to compare the electrical resistance of a tube thermistor to a bead thermistor and so you can find a tube and a bead typically on a uh, indoor wall mounted mini split unit. You could also find these two typically on an outdoor mini split unit. So if you're if you're finding a, a, an old one that's bad or something like that, you can just pull these right out of there. But what you're going to notice is as the temperature of my fingers is warmer than the room temperature, the electrical resistance measured by these two displays are lowering. And so this display is 12 volt powered, but it's measuring the electrical resistance on this bead thermistor. And so as you can see right here, we've got eight batteries and they're each 1.5 volts a piece. And so if you add them up, cause they're connected in series, you get 12 volts, but really they're 1.65 volts a piece if they're, if they're brand new. So it's gonna be over 12 volts, but that will still be correct in reference to powering each of these small displays. And so you can see right here, you have a display, you have your two wires in order to power it with your batteries. And here's your two wires that you would connect to your, your bead thermistor. You have to remember that on a mini split, the system's constantly measuring the temperature of the air crossing the indoor coil. And then it's also measuring the temperature of the refrigerant traveling through the coils. And so the tube thermistor is typically sandwiched up up against the copper tubing and the bead thermistor is just typically measuring the, the air temperature. And so the system can determine the temperature at that point of the system based on the electrical resistance measured on these thermistors. And so we simply have these right here on the back. We have the displays, so this display is being powered, it's basically just connected to the battery bank. And then you have your thermistor just wired into this yellow and blue right here. So pretty simple. And the object is that this bead thermistor is actually what is inside a tube. And so it's the same thing. And so I just want, say, students to, to know the difference, like why these are like this. And the whole point is this has a higher sensitivity compared to this and this has more surface area in order to measure the temperature of the refrigerant traveling through the tube. And so you can measure both of them at the same time with this. And this right here could just be made out of plywood. It's just a vinyl board in this case, but I have the parts list for the components down in the description section below and also at our website at acservicetech.com in the resource section. This is pretty simple as well. This is your louver motor. And so here's a louver blade. And so this can just be taken right off of a old wall mounted unit and you can take the louver motor right out of there as well it's a 12 volt louver motor and what i did is i just drilled a hole with a a unibit to the size to just tension fit this in and this is 12 volts and you have a battery bank that's made up of 12 volts and so you just have your your one common point right here and that goes to the red wire on your louver motor and then you just got to get your sequence right right here and these are just quarter inch straps that we put in a vise and we smush them down to make them flat, but they are rigid, so that's nice. And then we just screw them down and just, we have the wire underneath and it's just sandwiched there. It's just very easy. And so the, the object of this is, let me just scrape across these, but you just have like this. As you do this, this louver blade is going to be turning. And what you need to do is we have a little power switch right here. So as I scrape across each one of these, basically I'm just doing this very quickly by scraping. You can see the louver blade is actually moving, but it's moving very, very, very slowly. And that's what it does in a mini split. So you have, you have 12 volt pulses that are turning this. And we have a whole video explaining how a louver motor works. Link down in the description section below. 
But once again, a very simple setup. And we just have our connection to our, our multimeter probe. So you could use an old multimeter probe, but we have the parts list also. Link down in the description section below where to get these the cheapest app. Here's another way to hook this up. Basically, you can just leave the louver motor installed and you have these full vertical louvers in place. And then you can just take this. And so the students can see the entire vertical louver sections moving instead of the small horizontal louver blade in the last display. Here we have our EEV and I just drilled two holes on an angle into this vinyl board. And the very first thing that was done was up here at the top, we cut this off with a tubing cutter. And so obviously the system was empty. We cut this out of, this EEV out of, and then we just took a tubing cutter to cut the shell off, took our time. And so then the next thing that we did was we just turned this up counterclockwise so that we get the pin out of the way, grinded this open. And so that's that. And then in reference to the top right here, we just cut this piece off so that you could have the teeth exposed. And so on the inside here, you can see the teeth and you're gonna to wanna to see that in order to explain how this works to your students. And we'll have a whole full length video on how this works down in the description section below. But really what you're gonna do is you see the white tape here and tape here. We have a 12 volt battery bank because this is a 12 volt EEV. And so we just take this and we can just come in one direction right here and you can even go like this to, to make it faster. And so you can see the movement of the internal uh, magnet and pin assembly as this is turning. And so you can also visualize it down here. You have a connected common over here. This is a six wire EEV. If it's a five wire, you just have the one common wire coming over to here. These are small little quarter inch clamps that we straightened out and that's it. So it's pretty simple. Here you have a pressure transducer. And so this will be a common one used, say on an R410 or an R32 system. And so you can have this plugged right in here and we cut the wires off and we wire nutted it right onto a USB phone charging cord. And the whole point of this is that we could plug this in the wall and then have your five volts where you would normally be charging a phone, we are powering our five volt pressure transducer because a phone gets charged with five volts as well. So uh, a common cord like this is gonna have four wires, two are for data, two are for power. So we just cut that off and we're just using the red and the black in order to power the pressure transducer. And then due to the applied pressure, we have a changing voltage on our green wire right here. And so we can measure that with a multimeter. And so we would use these right here, either a T onto the, the bottom right here. And we'd be measuring pressure out the side and then we would apply the pressure in the bottom or we could just have a, a single one just like this in order to connect to a refrigerant hose in order to apply pressure from a, from a nitrogen bottle. But basically, we're gonna be able to change the pressure and measure the voltage just like this. You can see that we have a changing voltage due to the changing pressure. And so you could also, instead of using the USB phone charging cord, you could just use a battery bank with three batteries in series. And of course, this is gonna be adding up 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 1.5. So you're gonna have 4.5 volts, but the reality of it is you're actually gonna have a higher voltage because if the batteries are new, they're gonna be measuring typically 1.65 volts a piece. So you're gonna equal 4.95 volts and that will be perfect for powering your pressure transducer. The other thing is instead of applying pressure with maybe either a compressed air or nitrogen in the bottom, what you could do is you could just grind off this uh, brass piece right here in little sections and pop it off and you could have the students apply pressure just with their fingers on the end of this and your output voltage on the green wire may be as high as a volt. And so that's another way to teach this. And of course we don't have this laid out on a display board. We're just keeping it loose, but that's up to you. Uh, but I just wanna give these options in order to, to teach the students in the classroom so that they can, they can touch these things, they can, they can learn it in multiple mediums. And if you wanna learn more about the pressure transducers, 
thermistors, louver motors, or the EEV. I've got an individual video on each one of those explaining those in depth. And I have the parts list all linked down in the description section below. And they're also listed over their website at acservicetech.com in the resource section. And if you want to learn more about inverter mini split systems, and the refrigerant related procedures, the electrical procedures, and all the components inside how the system works, make sure to check out our Inverter Mini Split Operation and Service Procedures book, which is available over to our website at acservicetech.com, over on Amazon, and also on Google Play and Apple Books. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.